I was showing my parents, I was like, something's wrong. I was like, something's wrong. I have to like call someone and tell them they like paid me too much money. I like had never seen my name with that much money in my life before ever. This is the reunion where former college athletes meet up 10 years later to talk lessons learned about sports, money, and life. One thing I love about both of you all stories is it's very clear that you almost don't know life without soccer. You've been doing it for so long. But when did you know that it could be your career, Christy? Luckily for me, as I was leaving college, the NWSL started, so I was able to play in the first year of that. When I entered college, the MLS didn't even exist. So I went to school not thinking about uh, making, you know, having a career in, in, in pro soccer. Uh, and then it happened quickly as I was in college, the league came about and uh, an opportunity came to DC United mm -hmm. uh, you know, after my junior year. I was with the national team and stuff when I was younger too, like when I was 19, 20, and 21. So I think I did know that I could play probably around 18 or 19 years old. When it comes to finances and you're thinking about all your options within the soccer world, what was it like kind of juggling both of those ideas? It was tough at first because you're just not making what you think you should. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it was just an investment in myself. When you're 20, 21 years old and you're turning pro, uh, you know, at least for me, it was, it was about becoming a pro and succeeding for my teammates, for myself, for my family. And the financial part really wasn't that big a deal. And as my career went on, each year that would creep in. The financial component of it would creep in a little bit more mm -hmm. and, and, and that became part of the emphasis. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah. no, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So give an example of what you mean by the financial component beginning to creep in as you excelled. Well, <laughs> my first couple of years I made all the rookie mistakes, so to speak, <laughs> of, of uh, you know, I bought an expensive car. I. Uh, Went in with my brother on some real estate. I it's went like with fun some when friends. You're young. Yeah, right. It's, it's, it's I bought fun a bar. Like you know, I, yeah. I, 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 I had oh, a, bar. a bar. Yeah, I had a bar. Wow. Yeah, I ran a bar for a little bit. <laughs> That's yeah. pretty cool. So I, all the cliches I, I yeah. ran through early, and <laughs> I kind of made a lot, a lot of mistakes. But also within those mistakes, and th those were those were great learning opportunities for me. Once you hit those like later 20s, early 30s, you're starting to think about like, oh my, I can't play forever. My career is gonna end soon. So I think that that's obviously when I um, got my financial advisor and I'm trying to plan for the future. When I retire, I want to feel comfortable retiring and like giving that little bit of time to myself to find a new job and what I'm actually interested in besides soccer or if it's gonna be with soccer. Let's take a little walk down memory lane. Roll the tape, kind of look at some Christy highlights. Uh-oh. Oh, God. Uh -oh. <laughs> what was your strength in this moment as a player? I think I was at a point in my college career where people relied on me, so I kind of used that as my strength. I was like, I have to be the one to take over the team, kind of. What does a good goal feel like? Obviously, I do not know. You just, like, crave it. Like, you crave, like, that moment, breathe in after a goal, and it's just, like, a huge, just, like, sigh of just, like, excitement, but, like, relief. And then you get to, like, share that moment with your teammates. You crave it. It's, like, mm -hmm. addicting. We all remember that moment where we got our first big check, and you just think that you could buy the whole world. What is the first thing you bought when you got a real check for the first time? I must have been 22 and I just got put on contract with the national team. And I remember looking, like opening my mail and looking at it and I was like, th I was like, there's no way this is right. <laughs> and it, it, now it wasn't that much money, yeah. but I like had never seen my name with that much money in my life before ever. And I was showing my parents, I was like, something's wrong. I was like, something's wrong. I have to like call someone and tell them they like paid me too much money. I bought a David Yurman ring. I honestly don't even know where it is now, but it was just one of those things that I wanted so bad at the time. But um, that was my first big purchase and I like felt so good getting it and then I did feel a little bit guilty after because it was about half of what my paycheck was. <laughs> I went and bought a car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the cliche athlete. I bought an E430 Sport Mercedes. It was beautiful. <laughs> and I walked in and I, I, I said, yeah, I want that one. And so we did some paperwork. He goes, you can't afford this car. And he goes, you have no credit because I just turned oh, pro. Yeah, I had no credit. Yeah. So I ended up paying quite a bit of cash for it because I didn't, I couldn't finance a lot. One thing you said earlier I thought was great was that you invested in yourself. 
Expand on that investment and how it so beautifully paid off for you. In my early 20s, I was uh, doing really well with soccer. I was with the national team. Um, I was in the NWSL, I was a starter. So I was making enough money where I was, where I was comfortable. And then I got cut from the national team. And there was probably five or six years there where I wasn't, I wouldn't say I was struggling, but you know, it was like paycheck to paycheck. I wasn't really performing my best. I hit another point too, where I made it back with the national team and I'm still with them now. And you know, financially I'm in like the best spot I've been with, I've been in, in my entire career. So I feel like over these past eight years, 10 years getting back with the national team, all those years, like that was kind of an uninvestment in myself. You always go through these periods that whether it's injuries, doubt, or you know, mental health, everybody goes through it. That resiliency is a big part of people having success in, in both the sports world and the financial world. My, my adversity was a little bit different. I, I had 10 surgeries during my career. Probably should have retired a few times, but kept, uh, kept hobbling back onto the field. And I'm glad I did because, you know, if I would have stopped, I wouldn't have been in a World Cup, you know, maybe not in the Olympics. Scouting report um, on college, you. I was a lot. I was fairly relentless. Oh, wow. UVA was a, a, a real factory at the time. When I when I went there, they had won uh, four national championships in a row. Uh, unfortunately, I went there and ruined it all, and uh, <laughs> we, we we never won one. But it was a, a great place to you know to, to play the game, and it was a really professional environment. Mm -hmm. So I, I learned uh, a lot on the field, and I guess a, a lot off the field. One thing specifically in women's soccer that has been at the forefront, as it should be, is equal pay and making sure that you all are compensated for your work, for what you've earned, and all of those things. How would you describe to a person why that fight was and is so important? We have been working just as hard as the men. We have been putting butts in seats just as many as the men. And I think that we've proven ourselves to be, you know, one of the top teams in America. So I think it's just so important and I want all the young girls who are playing soccer to know that they don't have to stop after college. Like they can mm -hmm. keep playing, they can make it a career. Like this can be what they do, this can be what they aspire to do. I just think it's it's so important. It's such a good step in the right direction just for sports in general, not just women's sports. What word would you want to describe your life in the next 10 years? Balanced. I have three kids and being a father and also uh, trying to earn and, and you know, being a motivated person to, uh, uh, you know, succeed, whatever that means in uh, in, in my, uh, in, in business or sport or whatever I choose to do next. I think fulfilled, because I feel like as athletes, you're always wanting more. If I was telling my 25-year-old self that I was 32 and still playing, I'd be like, oh my God, no, you're crazy. I just feel like, you always want more as an athlete. And at some point, I want to feel fulfilled. I want to feel fulfilled of what I accomplished in my career. I want to feel fulfilled in my personal life. So I think that that's definitely something, like I want to feel like I did everything that I wanted to.